can you enter the field of engineering without being a proper engineer like without a proper engineering degree or enter the medicine or you be, can you become a doctor like the professional doctor without having your proper mbbs done then how do you think you can enter the teaching field without doing teacher education <laughs> I do a podcast and I understand mindset. I understand psychology. Now you have been teaching students. You have been with a lot of students, and the students are uh, the students have an age group of around uh, you know probably in the age group of around fifteen and above or somewhere in that region. So yeah. what what generation gap do you see in those students when it comes with respect to us because. Uh, we like I will see a lot of generation gap with my dad, but we will still connect on some parts of it. Same way, what do you see in the students that you teach? Okay, this is a very nice question. In fact, I would like to put forward that we are in an age of technological advance. Now, you know, yeah. when technology advances, generation gap decreases. I feel that technology and generation gap are inversely proportional. now when it comes to the covid era when we came to the covid era the older generation teachers were not that technologically advanced found it very hard to cope up with online teaching okay but us us as teachers we like if i consider myself we have been through the technological era we know what is instagram we know how to handle our phones we know how technical glitches are and daily there's something new we catch up quickly and we learn that new thing so i i feel that the technological gap between us and our students is very less or you know it's so calling the age of the generation gap i will call it the technological gap mm-hmm. why because technology is something that differentiates the generation that's what we learned in computers also first generation computers second generation computers okay same thing that when we are talking about generations also like if suppose i consider my parents also my parents and me if we have a common problem my parents me and my students if we have a common problem in front of us i will see that my parents will find it or the generation of my parents will find it harder to uh, you know to get over the problem compared to me and my students because we don't have a great age group uh, age gap okay for first of all that's the thing and second thing that we are in hand with the technology so mm-hmm. i feel that when it comes to generation gap of understanding students psychologically also we can connect with our students better than what our parents generation could connect with us why because we see our today's generation is all about you know if i say they are very dank okay if that's a word to be used dank and you know they are into memes and we also connect to those memes because we want yeah, to see we, we receive those memes and when when i take these memes as examples okay students understand it okay rather rather than a teacher taking a very wonderful like, you know a senior teacher taking a wonderful example a real life example if i just take a meme example students will understand me or catch up with me better and that is where technology comes into play so i feel that when it comes to understanding psychology also we should be stepping down a little to what the stu- the generation okay we should be stepping down to the generation or the technological age and understanding the student rather than st- sticking to what we know so i feel this is very vital i love that i know Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. You did answer that. Uh, another point that I missed out in the last part is the part where you talked about uh, <clears throat> the mindset of a teacher trying to demotivate a student. I would love to talk about it. I missed that out a little bit uh, before mm-hmm. while uh, telling you that. Um, I think a major reason why people do that um, is because we have been. Tra- it's not the parents' fault. it's not the generation's fault to be very honest it is the fault of the british invasion in the country so when they had come into the country they had always taught us to be in positions of lesser command so when we have taught to be in positions of lesser command you don't encourage the questioning you don't encourage the asking of the question why is this happening? so when you mm. when you keep asking that question why it is happening the teacher gets irritated the teachers like you know uh, just do what you are supposed to do that is a quality that has been brought to us by the british they have been they have got it in us and they have left us socially engineered so we have been trained to think in a certain way that you know you will if you are trying to do anything apart from the curriculum 
like like you said about your teaching where you were doing mm-hmm. something apart from what the teacher was uh, doing uh, that became a very irritating factor for that person and that is why they will tell you you are not doing, you are not doing this properly don't do this and stuff like that and that is when we are told to think in a very controlling way you know and that is something that you pointed out that i missed to point out last time so i i, I thought of bringing it up this time so it was, it is not our fault we have to start unlearning the social engineering and we have to we have to develop this uh thinking of anvik shikhi which is something that charnakya used to mention and which was Absolutely. something that was deeply rooted into our teaching education but it was it is something that has been like you know literally rooted out by the british and they have put that uh, thinking that if you have low marks we will target that particular student if someone is doing something different we will target that particular student and try to demotivate them into motivating them which is a very wrong thing to do it is it is in fact very wrong i must say it now let's just not talk about the british era also now mm-hmm. i feel that in india in india specifically teaching profession had been at its period of glory once upon a time definitely you know, we we have we have the shlokas which says uh, matr devo bhava pitr devo bhava acharya devo bhava okay we have given the position of a teacher equal to the position of god we mm-hmm. all all say guru is brahma guru is vishnu guru is mahesh that means we teachers have the capability to create you teachers have the capability to preserve you and teachers have the capability to destroy you i don't believe in the teachers having capability to destroy you but yes in one manner or the other we need to we need to believe that teaching as a profession also should be a glorious profession now this is another incident not an incident but a little thought i would like to put forward now professions or occupations also we have two occupations one is called regular occupations and one is called uh, not irregular i would say occasional occupations mm-hmm. now, when i talk about teaching teaching comes under regular occupation a student will see his parents and teachers almost every day a student will te- see his parents and teachers almost every day but if, if we talk about doctors a student will see a doctor occasionally so you see how a student treats his parents and teachers compared to how he treats the doctor now when he goes to the doctor after the doctor examines him he will say thank you doctor but when it comes to teachers also or his parents also he'll hardly thank his parents or you know he'll hardly say sorry to his parents or even the teacher now even if they're saying thank you teacher after the class it's a routine it's not it's not something that's coming from their heart okay this is one thing i feel as when we, when i talk about teachers era of glory when we were when india had great the one of the greatest teachers also at that point of time people used to express their gratitude through their heart they they felt thankful to the teacher but since uh, what you mentioned about the british era also after that we we realized that teaching is a very regular profession that teachers are there they are there every day there is a work to do you know we have this mindset that what teachers are doing that is their usual job to do okay so why do we need to thank them or why do we need to apologize when we make a mistake okay and uh, you know why do we need to think of them through our hearts but remember one thing once you miss out on a teacher once you once you leave school and once you have certain incidents where you remember what that teacher said once upon a time because every most of us had this incident okay because when i finished my schooling i remember what my school teachers once said to me when i finished my 11th and 12th i remember what my 11th 12th teachers said to me now i'm in my graduation once i finish my graduation i will one day remember what my graduation teachers said to me okay so once we leave on the when they once they're left out okay from our lives we will realize how important they were so even if we treat teachers teachers and parents okay let me just say teachers and parents because we are very neglective when it comes to parents also sometimes how many of us have thanked our parents for what they do every day for us okay we think it is their routine it is their job it is what they are supposed to be doing for us as children but no they are doing something for you so that okay they they don't expect a thank you but when you thank them from their heart when you talk to them because even when i say you know this happens that you post pictures of your parents on parents day and fathers day mothers day you speak to teachers on teachers day but one random day when you just call up to te- call up your teacher or when you call a teacher or when you just drop a message to some of your old teachers just look how happy they will be because this is what i feel is efficient teaching is when your students remember you even after you complete your school okay when students remember you even after you're done because for a teacher a student is just student throughout this is what i learned from my teachers when i talk to my teachers they always say that 
when i was your when i was your student officially now this is an incident when i sent a facebook friend request to one of my teachers my teacher did not accept it when i was in school when i was in school my school teacher did not accept it after a couple of days she uh, she met me and she said that why did you why did you send me a facebook friend request i said because you are on facebook i wanted to connect with you she said that right now you are my student you are with me every day we we are already very much connected we talk every day what is the use of connecting on social media after i graduated after i finished my 10th standard the same teacher sent me a friend request and there was a message there was a very sweet message she said that now since you are not my student in school but you will always remain my student we can connect through social media now it is the right time that we need to connect on social media not then so she she had a question also do you remember the day okay that question so i i, I realized that that day the teacher was right now this is one thing that even i follow as a teacher i do not befriend my see if i'm a friendly teacher also i don't befriend my students okay they are my students i am their teacher we have that you know we have that respect that's called the respect that we need to have between each other now what, how would you feel if a person who's 10 or uh, you know 5 8 to 10 years younger than you coming and tapping your back like oh my god you're a hello boy because recently i had a person who say yo oh, bro okay I I had a person who literally said yo bro to me and I was not I was not at all happy with the way he started a conversation I gave him the teacher stare you know what it is <laughs> yeah it's a, it is the coldest deadliest stare a person can get see it may because yo because being friendly is a different thing and befriending someone is a totally different thing okay so we need to we need to remember that whatever it is however friendly we are with the students we need to maintain the dignity of a teacher and a student relationship and this is what we need to learn from the ancient generation the teachers glory generation so i feel this is one very important point i'd like to put forward that remember teachers are teachers may be friendly but they are not your friends till you are their students okay i love that uh, <laughs> the part in there uh like a teacher is responsible for shaping a country or shaping the world because <clears throat> because you are responsible for uh teaching the younger generation for the future of this world so how how important do you think is teacher education because that is something that you are focused on and i would love to hear about this 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 is a very very wonderful point you have put forward Really, really, I'm really happy about speaking about teacher education because my goal in life is just not being a teacher. See, I have two very important goals in life. One is being a foundational teacher. Now, when I say foundational teacher, it is a, a teacher who's teaching seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. Okay, who's building up the base which is required for a student to get ahead with the subjects in maths and science. And the second thing I want to be is a teacher educator, teaching teachers how to teach. Okay. because i feel teaching teachers how to teach is more important than just a person entering the field now i told you i mentioned it in the beginning that you are a graduate you do your b ed separately and then you enter the field of teaching it becomes a very i can say is is just a matter of degrees okay it is just a matter of the graduation degrees that you are having that you have completed bsc or a ba or a bcom and then you know whichever degree you want and then you are doing a b ed and you are entering the field so this is i i think so here you are falling back upon one is your subject catch now when you're doing your two years b ed okay when you're doing your two years b ed because b ed is for two years you may not be very much inclined towards your core subjects okay you are not very inclined towards your core subject but uh, so when you're entering the field also you need to revise a lot and enter the field but when we are talking about integrated teacher education degrees you are also in your core field and also you're doing your b ed okay it is not a lot of a task you just have an extra paper okay and a lot of things that you need to learn about teachers now speaking about importance of teacher education can you enter the field of engineering without being a proper engineer like without a proper engineering degree or enter the medicine or you be, can you become a doctor like the professional doctor without having your proper mbbs done then how do you think you can enter the teaching field without doing teacher education So this is one thing that I feel that people, the world has taken this profession for granted because people enter the field without, first of all, without the passion for it, and secondly, without the knowledge for it. They think teaching is the profession. See, that's what I said. We are over the glory of the golden age of the golden era of teachers. Now we are in the era where teaching has been being the most, you know, the secondary, tertiary profession, where when you can't do something, you are into the field of teaching. 
so that's why we have two kinds of teachers i said one who are educated to become teachers and one who are just in the field just to explain what they know so when it comes to teacher education let me mention teacher education does not, does just does not mean teaching it has a lot of things you need to learn it is all about psychology you have counseling you have sociology you have anthropology okay you have linguistics also that how do you think you are supposed to uh, you know lingually behave with the students how you supposed to speak your teacher your teacher grooming you have your teacher uh, training how you supposed to be speaking in a classroom classroom management classroom leadership there are several things you think teacher education is just about how to teach but no there are several things or several attributes or several characteristics that teacher is supposed to build up before becoming a teacher because without these characteristics you just become a person who's explaining what they know now let's talk let's talk yeah let's talk about edtech platforms nowadays you have a lot of edtech platforms that come up with teachers who are you know they're teaching they know, they have the knowledge they have the technology and they're teaching but how far do you do they know how to handle a class now some people are born with the skill to handle classrooms okay these are i call them classroom management skills some people are born with it some people need to learn these classroom management skills and people who are into edtech when they come into professional offline classes it becomes very difficult for them to handle classes why because they do not know where the limit is because in teacher education you know where the limit is of joking now mm -hmm. you crack certain jokes which are not supposed to be cracked in a classroom because i feel the classroom yes the classroom should be a open space i am a very constructivist teacher a constructivist teacher is someone who lets their students open up in the classroom but when we are being constructivist we also must remain you know we must remember the dignity of classroom the sanctity of a classroom key what does a classroom signify so when you are cracking certain jokes which are which may be very entertaining for students but at one limit it turns out to be the students also turn out to be very casual with you they will start because i have seen certain videos where students these online students start commenting you know when, when the teacher asks for doubts these students start commenting things and the teacher is very frustrated and in in frustration also the teacher says things which they are not supposed to say so i feel in teacher education teacher education teaches you patience it teaches you the behavior of a teacher it teaches you the right way to handle students and without teacher education you are just being you are just being a person who's uh, explaining what you know that's all so without teacher education you cannot because if you want to build a generation of students who are efficient in the field a teacher should be equally efficient to handle these students okay now there are some teachers we know that some teachers have not done teacher education but still they are good teachers that's why we call them the born teacher qualities okay so some teachers there are there are teachers who are very very good teachers who have great uh, management skills also and these are born teachers but it's very rare to see certain teachers okay and those teachers who are born teachers have retired today okay most of them who we saw as good teachers they are retired today and nowadays when you go to schools you see that there are good teachers also and there are some teachers who are who are just there to fill up the void okay there are voids yeah. everywhere just to fill up the place they are there okay so that the school can say that we don't have, we don't lack teachers we have teachers okay so this may this may sound a little uh, this may sound a little different but we have crossed the generation of having influential teachers and now we have those teachers who are just there to fill the void and that's why we say teacher education is important because once you are done with teacher education proper teacher education you know that you're not there just to fill the void but you're there to inspire students to do something better in life because we are not here teachers are not here to specifically make students an engineer or a doctor or push them into a specific field we are here to open the fourth window of the johari window coming back to the same point teachers draw a teacher's profession is basically to help students explore themselves explore the unexplored and make them learn because if there were no good teachers in my life i wouldn't have taken teaching i would have been in some engineering institution today doing some of my projects today or interning with you at the moment okay so this is one thing i feel that a teacher's job the main job of a teacher is to help students explore the unexplored and that's where teacher education plays a major role i i love this whole part and i also love the part where you said uh, the part where a teacher's job is to open the fourth window a lot of the teachers job is becoming something like you know they will they will start neglecting the students who are getting lower marks because those <clears throat> what happens is if a teacher a teacher's success nowadays is based on how many students of that teacher get good grades wonderful 
Yeah, that is that is what happened, and that is why people. That is why the teachers. What they do is they start neglecting the students who are getting less marks, and they start only focusing on those students who are getting amazing marks. And then they'll be like, you know, then they'll be like, you know, these are my students. They will never say that to the uh, person who has got less marks. So that is what is happening. It is becoming a very um, selfish thing, and that is why teacher education is so important. And I love that you brought that up. Taking a student from eighty to hundred, anybody can do. But taking a student from forty to sixty is what a real good teacher can do. So this is one thing. This is one thing I always keep in mind that my my status my work satisfaction does not happen by making toppers, but my work satisfaction happens in when I make a student who did not have the confidence to score uh, well in maths or in science or in physics to score well in that subject. When they come up that yes, I did better than my last time because of you, sir. That is the real work satisfaction. It was taking credits of what toppers or hardworking students do. Anybody can do it. But taking the right credits of you no, know, uh, taking the due credits of when a student comes up to you and says that it's because of you I could do it. That is all what a teacher needs in life. So you you are responsible as a teacher. You should be responsible for mediocre students equally as equal because you can't discriminate. As teachers, it's very wrong to be discriminating.